Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series about the greatest knights. In this episode, we will talk about James Douglas, a Scottish knight who fought for his nation's freedom against the English invasion. Early in life, he joined King Robert the Bruce and fought by his side in a series of smashing victories against the English invasion, including Roxburgh Castle and Bannockburn, before he died on crusade in Spain. James Douglas was born to Sir William Douglas in the year 1286, the same year that King Alexander III of Scotland died. This death, in time, led to a succession crisis in Scotland. King Edward I of England took advantage of Scotland's trouble to install his preferred candidate on the throne and then invade Scotland with the goal of conquering his northern neighbor. James' father, Sir William the Hardy, served as garrison commander for Berwick during its stand against King Edward's invasion. After the city's fall, about 7,000 Scots were murdered by King Edward's men. Sir William became a prisoner in the Tower of London, dying there in 1298. William's wife, Elizabeth Stuart, sent their 10-year-old son James to Paris to keep him safe. During his time in France, James Douglas became the squire of William Lamberton, the Bishop of St. Andrews. Sometime in the 1300s, Lamberton joined Sir James in his return home, where they learned that the Douglas family seat had been given to an Englishman named Robert Clifford. Lamberton joined 20-year-old James in a trip to the English court to petition for the return of his family estate. However, King Edward I forced Sir James to leave upon learning that he was the son of a man who died in the Tower of London. As the Douglas family drama unfolded, Robert the Bruce attempted to press his claim to the Scottish throne in the face of overwhelming English power. In 1306, Bruce murdered his main Scottish rival for the throne, John Common, at the Church of the Grey Friars in Dumfries. Bruce and Douglas are said to have met on the road near Moffat not long afterwards. According to legend, the desperate and vengeful Douglas pledged his service to the Bruce. Regardless of whether this story is true or not, Douglas attended Bruce's coronation at Scone in March 1306 and would remain King Robert's constant companion and trusted commander. The, together, the two men began a guerrilla war against the English, carrying out hit-and-run raids against the English garrisons and supply trains within Scotland. The next year, Douglas took the chance to settle old accounts with the English lords who had taken his family seat. Just as the Bruce murdered John Common in a church, the last place Common would suspect an attack, Sir James Douglas chose Palm Sunday, March 19, 1307, to retake his family seat. Most of the English soldiers had left the castle to attend mass. The Scots stormed into the church, shouting the war cry, Douglas! Douglas! They slaughtered most of the English soldiers in the church and then dragged the survivors into the castle's cellar. There the Scots beheaded all their prisoners, mounted their heads on a stack of broken wine casks, and set them ablaze. This slaughter would become known as the Douglas Larder. With his family seat firmly in hand, Douglas likely married around this time. Though we do not know the name of his wife, he had three children with her. Despite the Douglas's personal victory, Scotland endured seven more years of bitter conflict. During the years that followed the Douglas Larder, King Robert the Bruce lost three of his brothers, Neil, Thomas, and Alexander, with the latter being hung, drawn, and quartered. In 1313, Douglas made an even bolder attack on Roxburgh Castle. He slaughtered a group of black oxen and then draped their skins on his men. By crawling on all fours at night, they fooled the English guards into thinking they were cattle. Once out of the guards' sight, they scaled the walls with hooks and rope ladders, slaughtering the guards under cover of night and easily taking the castle. After seizing it, they destroyed the fortifications so it could not be used in the future by the English occupation. In honor of his achievement, Robert the Bruce made James Douglas a knight banneret, a knight who could lead men in battle under his own banner. By 1314, only two major Scottish castles remained in English hands. That year, Bruce led the Scottish army in a siege of one of those two castles, Stirling. 
While they did so, King Edward II arrived with an army more than twice the size of the Bruce's. At the ensuing Battle of Bannockburn, Douglas commanded the Scottish left flank. The army occupied an old Roman road. Bruce and Douglas ordered the digging of potholes along a nearby river to force the English to confront the Scottish spearmen head-on along the road, instead of using their superior numbers to surround the Scottish force. Of the 6,000 Scots present at the battle, less than 1,000 died. Of the 13,000 English at the battle, almost 5,000 died. After this crushing victory of Bannockburn, Douglas led a force that pursued the fleeing King Edward II. While Edward escaped capture, he could not even stop to use the restroom. Douglas then led a series of bloody raids into the English countryside, burning crops and putting whole villages to the torch, leaving the population foodless and homeless. It was said that English mothers near the Scottish border sang a gruesome lullaby to their children. Hush ye, hush ye, little pet ye. Hush ye, hush ye, do not fret ye. The Black Douglas shall not get ye. To the English, Sir James Douglas was the Black Douglas, a boogeyman to frighten children with. However, to the Scots, he was good Sir James, a great lord who became one of the Bruce's most trusted lieutenants. Before his death in 1329, Bruce asked Sir James to carry his heart on crusade, as the Bruce had died before he kept a pledge to go crusading. Sir James left Scotland in 1330, carrying the embalmed heart of his king in a silver cask around his neck. While staying at the town of Teba, Spain, the city was attacked by the Moors. According to legend, Douglas was abandoned by his supposed Spanish allies in the thick of the fighting. He threw the heart of Robert the Bruce towards the Moors, shouting, Go first, as thou hast always done, and Douglas will follow thee or die. Sir James Douglas died in the fighting. Scottish knights boiled Sir James' flesh from his bones to transport back to Scotland for a burial. His eldest son, William, now Lord of Douglas, interred his father's skeleton in St. Bride's Kirk in Lanarkshire. The heart of Robert the Bruce would be carried back to Scotland by Sir William Keith and laid to rest at the Abbey of Melrose. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.